In the previous tutorial we looked at the issue of sample rate but in this tutorial I just want to explain bit depth and you'll see that you've got a few options you've got 8, 16, you've got 24 and 32 bit bit depths and 32 is what's called floating point so it's very highly accurate. So what is bit depth? Well we looked at sample rate first and that's the number of individual samples per second that you're cutting through a waveform. We said that the higher the figure was the more samples you'll have particularly for high frequencies so this is a 20 kilohertz sample we had up here and you can see you've got lots of samples the bit depth is the digital word that represents each one of these samples so a sample is taken this spot represents a sample that's been taken through what would be a audio file now it's unusual for it to be a completely normal tone it would be some kind of audio file with all kinds of different frequencies represented inside it. I need to be able to say digitally exactly what that looks like. Now if I only had a one bit word, in other words it's just one or zero because it's digital, one bit means it's just turning on or off, all I can do is say either the waveform is on or the waveform is off, that's the only representation I have for that figure. If I then start to increase the bit depth I can add more and more information about the sample that I've taken and this is the sort of way it works if you're at 8 bits okay so each one of these samples is analyzed with an 8 bit word a digital word which is binary so each of those 8 bits can either be on or off 0 or 1 the number of different choices you have to represent that sample go from 0 to 255 so that's 256 in all because in digital things at zero counts as your first choice. Okay, so each one of these has got 256 bits of information that can be represented in them to give you a feedback of what the audio is actually doing. When you start to increase the bit depth, if I go up to say 16 bits, so that's 16 ones and noughts that can go along under any combination, the combination that I have from 8 being 0 to 255, if I go to 16, it goes from 0 to 32,768 so I've got 32,769 choices if I like to be able to tell me the difference between one of these and the next changes that have taken place exactly what's going on from a frequency tone and all the bits and pieces that can represent music however when you go right up to the top one 32 bits each bit remember is 1 and 0 so that's a word length of 32 individual bits each of which can be 1 and 0 the number of choices go from bear in mind 8 is 0 to 255 16 is 0 to 32,768 but when I go to 32 bits the amount of information I can have on each individual one of these samples goes from 0 to 4 billion 296 million 967,296 different changes. So you can see that a 32-bit floating point word can give you an extremely highly and very very accurate explanation of the sample that has been taken such that when it is reproduced it's going to be indistinguishable from the original. So that's the difference between all of these different bit depths, is how accurate each one of these samples are. And when you're recording, and you're trying to record and get a very accurate result, you want a high sample rate, and you want a high bit rate. If your computer can cope with it, go for a 32-bit floating point and a nice high sample rate, then you'll have lots of samples through all of your different waveforms, and those samples will be very, very highly accurate so that when you have to compress the end result down to CD, say 44,100 Hz and 16 bit bit depth, you've started with such an accurate recording of what you've created that when you actually do this final downsampling to get out for CD or even down to an MP3, you're still going to have something that sounds really good. If you'd started with a lower sample rate and a lower bit depth, and then you had to actually export those or, or downsample those for something else you're going to have been removing quality by starting with a higher sample rate and a higher bit depth you're going to be starting with very high quality and moving down and just a couple of things to mention 44,100 is what you typically have for a CD 48,000 is typically what you have for a DVD
And some of these smaller ones should be fine, say 22,050, you'd probably be fine for just the spoken word. These higher sample rates are really for making sure that you can cope with very high frequencies, but when it comes to the bit depth, if you start with 32 bits, you're always going to have a very highly accurate sample for every sample you take, regardless of how many samples you're taking. So that's an explanation of sample rate and bit depth. I hope you found those useful. My name's Andrew Davis, and thank you for watching and listening. Thank you.